We're going to turn now to immigration. The crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border consistently ranks as one of the top issues for American voters. Senator Vance, your campaign is pledging to carry out the largest mass deportation plan in American history and to use the U.S. military to do so. Could you be more specific about exactly how this will work? For example, would you deport parents who have entered the U.S. illegally and separate them from any of their children who were born on U.S. soil? You have two minutes. So first of all, Margaret, before we talk about deportations, we have to stop the bleeding. We have a historic immigration crisis because Kamala Harris started and said that she wanted to undo all of Donald Trump's border policies. 94 executive orders suspending deportations, decriminalizing illegal aliens, uh, massively increasing the asylum fraud that exists in our system. That has opened the floodgates. And what it's meant is that a lot of fentanyl is coming into our country. I had a mother who struggled with open opioid addiction and has gotten clean. I don't want people who are struggling with addiction to be deprived of their second chance because Kamala Harris led in fentanyl into our communities at record levels. So you've got to stop the bleeding. You've got to re-implement Donald Trump's border policies, build the wall, re-implement deportations. And that gets me to your point, Margaret, about what do we actually do? So we've got 20, 25 million illegal aliens who are here in the country. What do we do with them? I think the first thing that we do is we start with the criminal migrants. About a million of those people have committed some form of crime in addition to crossing the border illegally. I think you start with deportations on those folks. And then I think you make it harder for illegal aliens to undercut the wages of American workers. A lot of people will go home if they can't work for less than minimum wage in our own country. And by the way, that'll be really good for our workers who just want to earn a fair wage for doing a good day's work. And the final point, Margaret, is you ask about family separation. Right now in this country, Margaret, we have 320 20,000 children that the Department of Homeland Security has effectively lost. Some of them have been sex trafficked. Some of them hopefully are at homes with their families. Some of them have been used as drug trafficking mules. The real family separation policy in this country is unfortunately Kamala Harris's wide open southern border. And I'd ask my fellow Americans to remember when she came into office, she said she was going to do this. Real leadership would be saying, you know what? I screwed up. We're going to go back to Donald Trump's border policies. I wish that she would do that, it would be good for all of us. Governor, do you care to respond to any of those specific allegations, including that the vice president is, quote, letting in fentanyl and using kids as drug mules, among other things, yeah, regarding well, children? The drug mule is not true, but I will say about this, about the fentanyl, because this is a crisis of this, the opioid crisis. And the good news on this is, is the last 12 months saw the largest decrease in opioid deaths in our nation's history. 30% decrease in Ohio, but there's still more work to do. But let's go back to this on immigration. Kamala Harris was the attorney general of the largest state, a border state in California. She's the only person in this race who prosecuted transnational gangs for human trafficking and drug interventions. But look, we all want to solve this. I, most of us want to solve this, and that is the United States Congress. That's the Border Patrol agents. That's the Chamber of Commerce. That's most Americans out here. That's why we had the fairest and the toughest bill on immigration that this nation's seen. It was crafted by a conservative senator from Oklahoma, James Lankford. I know him. He's super conservative, but he's a man of principle, wants to get it done. Democrats and Republicans worked on this piece of legislation. The Border Patrol said, this is what we need in here. These are the experts. And the Chamber of Commerce and the Wall Street Journal said, pass this thing. Kamala Harris helped get there. 1,500 new border agents, detection for drugs, DOJ money to speed up these uh, the adjudications on this, just what America wants. But as soon as I was getting ready to pass and actually tackle this, Donald Trump said no, told them to vote against it because it gives him a campaign issue. It gives him to, what would Donald Trump talk about if we actually did some of these things? And they need to be done by the legislature. You can't just do this through the executive branch. So look, we have the options to do this. Donald Trump had four years. He had four years to do this. And he promised you, America, how easy it would be. I'll build you a big beautiful wall, and Mexico will pay for it. Less than 2% of that wall got built, and Mexico didn't pay a dime. But here we are again, nine years after he came down that escalator, dehumanizing people and telling him what he was going to do. As far as the deportation plan, at one point, Senator Vance said it was so unworkable to be laughable. So that's where we're at. Pass the bill, she'll sign it. Governor, your time is up. Uh, Senator, the question was, will you separate parents from their children? 
even if their kids are U.S. citizens. You have one minute. Margaret, my point is that we already have massive child separations thanks to Kamala Harris's open border. And I didn't accuse Kamala Harris of inviting drug mules. I said that she enabled the Mexican drug cartels to operate freely in this country. And we know that they use children as drug mules. And it is a disgrace. And it has to stop. Look, I think what Tim said just doesn't pass the smell test. For three years, Kamala Harris went out bragging that she was going to undo Donald Trump's border policy. She did exactly that. We had a record number of illegal crossings. We had a record number of fentanyl coming into our country. And now, now that she's running for president or a few months before, she says that somehow she got religion and cared a lot about a piece of legislation. The only thing that she did when she became the vice president, when she became the appointed border czar, was to undo 94 Donald Trump executive actions that opened the border. This problem is leading to massive problems in the United States of America. Parents who can't afford health care, school that are overwhelmed. It's got to stop, and it will when Donald Trump is president Senator, again. Senator, your time is up. Governor, what about our CBS News polling, which does show that a majority of Americans, more than 50 percent, support mass deportations? Look, we fix this issue with a bill that is necessary, but the issue on this is this is what happens when you don't want to solve it. You demonize it. And we saw this. And, and Senator Vance, and it surprises me on this, talking about and saying, I will create stories to bring attention to this. That vilified a large number of people who were here legally in the community of Springfield. The Republican governor said, it's not true. Don't do it. There's consequences for this. There's consequences. We could come together. Senator Langford did it. We could come together and solve this if we didn't let Donald Trump continue to make it an issue. And the consequences in Springfield were the governor had to send state law enforcement to escort kindergartners to school. I believe Senator Vance wants to solve this, but by standing with Donald Trump and not working together to find a solution, it becomes a talking point. And when it becomes a talking point like this, we dehumanize and villainize other human beings. T Tim, Governor, it, it, Governor, your time is up. Senator, I'll give you one minute, but I, let me just ask you the question please. first. Uh, the governor has made the point, and I think as a sitting lawmaker, you know that Congress controls the purse strings and any funding. So you have said repeatedly that Donald Trump would, through executive action, solve this. Do you disagree that Congress controls the purse strings and would need to support many of the changes that you would actually want to implement. You have one minute. Look, Margaret, first of all, the gross majority of what we need to do at the southern border is just empowering law enforcement to do their job. I've been to the southern border more than our borders are. Kamala Harris has been. And it's actually heartbreaking because the Border Patrol agents, they just want to be empowered to do their job. Of course, additional resources would help. But most of this is about the president and the vice president empowering our law enforcement to say, if you try to come across the border illegally, you've got to stay in Mexico. You've got to go back through property. Proper channels. Now, Governor Waltz broke, brought up the community of Springfield, and he's very worried about the things that I've said in Springfield. Look, in Springfield, Ohio, and in communities all across this country, you've got schools that are overwhelmed. You've got hospitals that are overwhelmed. You have got housing that is totally unaffordable because we brought in millions of illegal immigrants to compete with Americans for scarce homes. The people that I'm most worried about in Springfield, Ohio, are the American citizens who have had their lives destroyed destroyed by Kamala Harris's open border. It is a disgrace, Tim. And I actually think, I agree with you. I think you want to solve this problem, but I don't think that Kamala Harris does. Senator, your time is up. Governor, you have one minute to respond. Yeah, well, it, it is law enforcement that asked for the bill. They helped craft it. They're the ones that supported it. It was, that's because they know we need to do this. Look, this issue of continuing to bring this up, of not dealing with it, of blaming migrants for everything. On housing, we could talk a little bit about Wall Street speculators buying up housing and making them less affordable. But it becomes a blame. Look, this bill also gives the money necessary to adjudicate. I agree it should not take seven years for an asylum claim to be done. This bill gets it done in 90 days. Then you start to make a difference in this, and you start to adhere to what we know, American principles. I don't talk about my faith a lot. But Matthew 25, 40 talks about to the least amongst us, you do unto me. I think that's true of most Americans. They simply want order to it. This bill does it. It's funded. It's supported by the people who do it. And it lets us keep our dignity about how we treat other people.
Thank you, Governor. And just to clarify for our viewers, Springfield, Ohio, does have a large number of Haitian migrants who have legal status, right. temporary protected status. Well, Mar Mar Nora, Margaret, but, but thank you, Senator. We have no, no, so course. much to get to. Margaret, thank I, you, I think Nora. it's important we're because we're going to turn out of the, the debate, economy. Thank Margaret, you, Margaret. The, the rules were that the you economy, guys weren't going to fact check, and since you're fact checking me, I think it's important to say what's actually going on. So there's an application called the CBP One app where you can go on as an illegal migrant, apply for asylum or apply for parole, and be granted legal status at the wave of a Kamala Harris open border wand. That is not a person coming in, applying for a green card and waiting for 10 years. That Thank is you, the Senator. facilitation of illegal immigration, Margaret, by Thank our you, own Thank you, Senator, leadership. for describing the legal and process. Those laws, we and have Kamala so Harris much to get to, that Senator. Pathway. Those have laws so have been much... on the books since 1990. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, the the, the we CBP have... One app has not been on the books it's since 1990. It's something that Kamala Harris created, Margaret. Gentlemen, you're, the audience can't hear you because your mics are cut. We have so much we want to get to. Thank you for explaining the legal process. Nora. Thank you, Margaret.